here's a typical situation. A manager finally decides to take action against her toxic nurse. She tries to either discipline or may even want to terminate this person, but then human resources says, uh-uh-uh, you didn't cross your T's or dot your I's. Ugh, she hit a brick wall. In this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, I will share a few simple strategies to help managers bust through that brick wall by partnering with human resources. Hi, I'm Renee Thompson. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. I'm a workplace bullying expert and spend the majority of my time helping individuals and organizations eliminate workplace bullying. You know, almost every day of my life, a nurse reaches out to me asking for help. And this video series gives me the opportunity to help them and to help you. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to partner with human resources to stop bullying. A nurse manager has been dealing with high turnover and poor retention because of one toxic person. This person, otherwise known as the queen bully, has been wreaking havoc on the unit for decades, but her toxic behavior has never been addressed because she is so clinically competent. Finally, the manager has had enough and decides to terminate her, but when she contacts human resources, she hits a brick wall. Well, did you counsel this person? Um, what have you done to help this person change her behavior? I'm not sure you've documented enough to warrant any termination, on and on. Unfortunately, this story repeats itself every day. Frontline managers who have been using silence as a strategy when dealing with problem employees, when they finally decide to do something about it, they don't always get the support that they need from human resources. There's a huge disconnect between leadership and human resources. And the problem is really twofold. First, many frontline managers view HR as the last resort to get the help that they need when they finally want to discipline or even terminate an employee for disruptive behaviors. But in many cases, they haven't built a case that warrants corrective action. I know this because I was one of them. I used to be a unit manager on a large medical unit and identified a few toxic employees that I really needed to either, they needed to change their behavior or leave the organization. Unfortunately, I realized that nothing was documented in their employee file by the previous manager. So when I finally asked HR for help, I kind of got the runaround. I was told repeatedly that I didn't have enough to actually terminate or do any corrective action. So I really couldn't take any action. You know, almost every time I host a workshop for leaders on the topic of bullying, a manager will always approach me at the end and say, that's it, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fire my bully. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Unfortunately, you can't just go back and fire someone just because now you have finally realized that he or she is toxic and needs to leave. You know, I've talked to so many HR representatives who also share examples of situations where a manager wants to terminate an employee because of bad behavior, and the manager may even present with some documentation, but the documentation is so vague. There's no dates, there's no details, and then that organization will be putting itself at risk if they allow the termination. So the second issue is that human resource departments uh, tend to be a little risk averse and that they may keep somebody who may be somewhat toxic, who maybe should have been terminated decades ago, um, but a lot of times it's because they're really clinically competent. And it's so frustrating when this happens. However, you know, I once talked to a director of human resources and uh, I love this person. She was way more willing to terminate an employee for behavior because her response was this. That's why we have a legal department. We pay them well. It's their job to mitigate our risk when we decide that an employee needs to be terminated. I loved it. You know, if human resource representatives, like when you think about it, they really need to stop putting the burden of proof on the manager and really start helping, supporting, and then advising managers on really how to use their existing policies and what the process is early on 
to address problem employees. Okay, so if you're a manager who's trying to discipline or maybe even terminate a toxic employee, it's really important for you to understand the role human resource departments play with regards to bad employee behavior and the lens that they view all cases. Their primary role is to really protect the organization from any potential liability and protect employees' rights. So with every case, they determine the risk versus the benefits of keeping or losing an employee. So here's what I want you to do. Number one, schedule a meeting with your director and somebody from Human Resources. Number two, provide them with as much documentation as you possibly have about a person's behavior and how their behavior impacts these things. Patient safety, patient quality, patient satisfaction, or team performance. Because if this person, if you can demonstrate that this person is creating a toxic work environment, you will have a greater chance of human resources actually helping you. So include any data you have about turnover, about employee complaints, or, or any of your observations. And then the third thing is let your human resource representative know what your intentions are, that you intend to terminate this employee if that's the case, and ask for their support. Actually say to them, what do you need from me so that if this ends up leading to termination, you have exactly what you need. Okay, if you're a human resource representative, this is what I want you to understand. You need to understand the role of the frontline manager is really to create an environment where employees work collaboratively as a team to provide high quality, safe and effective patient care. If a toxic employee is on that team, patients and everyone else suffers. Managers need your help, they need your advice. So number one, I want you to build a relationship with your frontline managers so that they feel more comfortable seeking help from you before they want to terminate an employee. Provide counsel and view yourself as their advisor. Number two, I want you to attend management meetings, any leadership meeting, ask to be invited and educate them on the following any policies related to workplace bullying and incivility. Believe it or not, many managers do not know what policies are in place to address disruptive behaviors. The process for reporting disruptive behaviors, because a lot of people don't even know what the process is, and how to properly document incidents of disruptive behaviors. And then the third thing I want you to do is be open-minded and kind of help tear down those brick walls. I know it's easier to terminate someone for either poor clinical performance or time in attendance, but behavior is equally as important. And when you think about it, shouldn't nursing leadership and human resources always be on the same page and have the same goals? Absolutely, we need to do a better job partnering. So instead of seeing each other as these formidable adversaries, we need each other as, see each other as partners in creating a more professional, supportive, and nurturing work environment for employees and the patients we serve. Okay, well, I would love to read any comments you have about this topic, especially if you're a frontline manager or somebody who works in human resources. Like I said, we need each other to communicate better with each other. So I'd love to read any comments that you have. The other thing that you can do is share this video with others who may also be struggling with this topic. Make sure you go to my website for more resources. My website is www.renethompsonspeaks.com. And you know, let me know if I can help. Invite me to your organization where we can engage in conversations about really how to end nurse bullying. So I wanna thank you for listening. Until our next conversation, be kind, take care, stay connected.